in the garage here with another quick tech tip that I've been working on. So if you have an LS swap in an 80s GM, 60s, 70s GM, whatever, <clears throat> in this case, I am not using the factory AC pump. That is a Sandine style newer compressor. You would get that in maybe a vintage air kit, off highway construction or semi truck or something. Uh, the problem with the current production newer compressors is sometimes they're variable displacement. Uh, sometimes they don't fit. Uh, the hoses can be hard to hook up. If you can get them hooked up, they're great. But in this case, I just have that aftermarket Sandini compressor. Well, one issue is on older carbureted stuff with carburetor or EFI or whatever, you'll notice there is usually like a little solenoid on the throttle body or carburetor that'll bump the throttle linkage to actually bump your RPM up when you turn your AC on. One challenge with these LS engines is that there isn't a way, especially if you're drive by wire like me, there's not a way to bump that idle up. So when you send your 12 volt signal on a normal G body, square body, whatever pickup, uh, you send your 12 volts from your cabin to your compressor, which locks the clutch up and that turns your AC on. And then it would possibly bump that solenoid. But in the case of an LS, your 12 volt signal from your HVAC controls goes to your computer, your ECM, and from the ECM, it determines if conditions are met, that it allows it to go to air, it allows the air conditioning to turn on. If it allows it to turn on, it then sends a signal to a relay, which would be in your fuse box, which then turns the compressor on. So what I'm doing here is kind of backwards from what a normal LS does and more like a G body where the compressor turns on, but I still want the computer to do its thing, like bump the idle, turn on the electric fans, basically make the engine run better with the AC on, like I have that RPM bump on the throttle body or carburetor. So what I did here is I take the 12 volts from the cabin to the compressor, the, cap the compressor turns on. I then take 12 volts from the compressor and send it to the ECM. So pin number 17 on this ECM, this is a 98 to 02, uh, 04, 11 style. And you give 12 volts to pin 17. This green and white striped wire. You also need to ground the pin number 17 here on a normal truck. That would be like a pressure cutoff where it disables the compressor if the pressure is too high. I don't need that because that is all currently included in the existing lower part or the existing uh, AC receiver dryer. So now the computer knows it's getting a signal, hey, I can turn on. The problem is just because you're telling the computer I want the AC on doesn't necessarily think that all the conditions are right to turn the AC on. Well, you're forcing the AC on without using the computer. So this is actually just controlling the idle. Well, if it's just controlling the idle, the compressor can be on and if it doesn't think the conditions are met, it's not going to bump the idle. Then I'll go over to HP Tuners here and show a little bit about why you need to make some tuning updates to allow this to work. Okay, so now we're at the HP Tuner side of things. When you are logging to see if your AC is actually working, you're going to want to turn on a couple of things. AC requested, an AC active in your channel list. If you are requesting AC, you're sending 12 volts to the computer. But if the conditions are not correctly met, AC active will not turn on. If AC active is no, your idle will not bump up RPM. So 
what I actually found is that there's a few things you need to do even if your car idles okay if your idle adapt your STIT your short-term idle trim or your LTIT long-term idle trim is too far off even if the car is idling fine if that value was above about 0.5 pounds per minute I noticed mine was about 0.7 it was not allowing the AC to turn on it was also idling really poorly and it was dying so what I found out after going archaeologist and HP tuners forms is that there's this table kind of strangely located under engine torque management engine AC torque max retard the engine will or the ECM will actually pull timing depending on the RPM so if you have let's say 25 degrees of timing at idle and it's 800 RPM and you have 60 kPa of manifold vacuum thanks for recommending edits or updates Microsoft uh, so it can actually pull up to 35 degrees of timing I don't know why it does this but you need to zero this table what also I noticed is you need to go over to idle target idle speed and when it's in in gear or park neutral AC on you need to bump that rpm up I bumped it by 200 rpm so I'm idling at about 975 with the AC on makes the alternator spin faster makes the compressor spin faster and then also under torque management or sorry if you go into your idle airflow you'll need to change your base idle airflow value here depending on how out of date your STIT your short and long-term fuel trim or idle trims are so you need to get that value close to zero before the AC will even turn on so once that's done you'll notice you have your LTIT AC off LTIT gear AC off you're going to want to get there's one for AC on you're going to want to get that AC on value within spec and how you do that is go into torque management again and your inertia torque this you're going to want to bump that up I added about point uh, fifty percent to this table and it actually made it idle better where depending on what kind of pump you have if it's variable displacement if it's fixed displacement it will bump the idle up to what you want so you can't just hook 12 volts up to the compre from the compressor to the ECM you also have to hook that ground up if you have a truck computer I think Firebird Camaros actually also use AC pressure granted this isn't here but it depends on what kind of operating system you have you need to check into that eliminate this timing table set it all to zero and then it should work and then your AC when you kick your AC on it bumps the idle up and nice things like your fan your electric fan will kick on and overall you uh have a nicer environment to go cruise your nice hot rod swapped AC car so like I say this works on any of the same mean compressors if you have an R4 factory compressor with the bracket that Holly or Dirty Dingo or whatever makes that mounts over there it works and your stock computer will control it and it'll work great so thanks for watching